Good morning. Today we'll understand the bacterial growth curve. You see, binary fission and other cell division processes will increase the number of bacterial cells in a population. We studied this increase in cell number by increasing the um, by analyzing the graph which we are going to plot. See, when we cultivate bacteria in broth test tubes um, in our laboratories. we are actually doing a batch culture uh batch culture this batch culture is a closed system means your bacteria are multiplying inside a test tube with a single batch of nutrient medium this tube is not open to receive any fresh medium not open to throw out the waste right so because we are not providing fresh medium the nutrient concentrations uh, will decline and waste concentration will increase so that is why it is called as one batch culture okay as opposed to continuous culture which you are going to uh, study in your um, next unit now when the medium when when this medium is fresh means because the conditions are favorable our bacteria are multiplying by binary fission okay and the cell numbers will increase this increase in numbers can be plotted as the log of the number of cells versus the incubation time okay i am going to show you uh, in the graph so the resulting graph line has four distinct phases now if we can please open the reading material uh, which is attached uh, the material number 3.4 bacterial growth curve and in that There is this figure six point six. Okay, it shows four phases. Okay, now the first phase is the lag phase. This is the time when you are introducing cells into this fresh medium. Okay, now when we measure the cell numbers, we see that there will be no increase. there will be no increase in cell numbers okay this uh, that is why it is called as lag phase now the question is why is there no increase in cell numbers you might say bacteria are eating and growing in size um that's why they are not multiplying okay if that was the case then there should have been increase in cell mass when we measure cell mass there too we see no increase so then what are these cells doing during this period why are they not multiplying right uh, we precisely cannot say but it could be for a variety of reasons okay a couple of reasons the cells may be old atp is depleted cofactors are depleted ribosomes are depleted now all these must first be synthesized before they begin multiplying second reason the cells were previously growing growing in a different media a different medium composition okay so in this medium they are they have to uh, synthesize new enzymes because the nutrition nutrient composition is different okay so this lag period they are using they may be using this lag period to synthesize new enzymes okay now another reason could be that the bacterial cells are injured okay and they need time to recover whatever the cause is eventually the cells will bounce back and replicate their dna and divide now this length of lag phase varies significantly okay based on the condition of the organism nature of the medium and the time the phase the amount of time uh, the cells will be in the lag phase is different if the inoculum is taken from an old culture it's different if you take it out from a refrigerator the amount uh, is different the time is different if uh, the inoculum is from a different culture medium okay but it is also 
true that this phase is shorter or even absent if the inoculum is taken from young vigorously growing culture which is in exponential phase and and it is of the same culture medium in that case you will see that the there's a very short lag uh, phase or sometimes it's it's very not noticeable okay now next we'll move to exponential phase okay uh, that will be in the next video good morning everybody today we'll understand the exponential phase okay so this exponential phase uh, is also called as uh, the log phase in this phase the bacteria are uh, uh, are multiplying at their maximum speed okay means uh, the growth rate is maximum here uh, the factors controlling the speed of multiplication okay are the genetic makeup of the bacteria the media components uh, and the environmental factors okay so now in this phase the growth rate is constant meaning the bacteria are dividing and doubling in number at regular intervals okay so you must understand growth rate is maximum as well as constant in this phase okay now you should ask the question is it synchronous as well meaning are all the bacteria beginning and ending their multiplication process at the same time okay uh, the answer is no each individual bacterium in the culture medium divides at a slightly different moment and so that is why the line of your graph rises smoothly rather than in discrete jumps you can take a look at this figure you can take a look at the figure as well okay now also in this phase the bacterial population uh, are the most uniform uh, in terms of the chemical and physiological properties meaning each one of all the bacterial cells in the test tube display the same properties and that is why you, you you when you're studying biochemical properties of a bacteria or physiological properties you will use samples from this exponential phase and not from any other phase okay now also in this phase you will observe uh, something called balanced growth meaning all cell molecules are uh, synthesized at constant rates relative to each other for example uh, a constant synthesis rate of 1 is to 2 for molecule a is to b okay uh, is maintained throughout the phase something like this now you might ask the question why are these ultra fine details required you know what's the use these details are very valuable when you are building a bioreactor that is when you are performing an industrial scale production of some molecule using these bacteria or fungi or so on okay now uh, you remember we mentioned about environmental factors and media component playing a role now let's play with these factors what happens if you do that an unbalanced growth is observed that is the rates of synthesis of cell components vary relative to each other okay until a new balanced state is reached all right so this can be demonstrated using uh, something called shift up or shift down experiments okay uh, 
in a shift up experiment you will transfer a culture from a nutritionally poor medium to a nutritionally rich medium okay in shift down experiment you will transfer a culture from a rich medium to a poor medium okay so when you do a shift up you will see that cells go into lag phase they will first construct new ribosomes to speed up protein synthesis because remember nutrition nutrient components have increased or the substrate concentration has increased okay now uh, when these ribosomes are built only after then actual new protein synthesis and new dna synthesis takes place only then multiplication rate rises and now when you do shift down in another experiment when you do shift down also the cells will go into lag phase because uh, here the cells take time to express those enzymes uh, which they'll use to synthesize those compounds which now have become unavailable because you're doing a shift down so only then cell division and dna replication will continue but in a shift down the net protein and net rna synthesis is slow cells become slower smaller and they reorganize themselves metabolically until they're able to grow again and only after that a new balanced growth is resumed and the cells enter an exponential phase so you can see these uh, shift up and shift down experiments demonstrate that bacterial growth is under precise coordinated control okay and responds quickly to changes in environmental conditions right yes so now there's a question what is the effect of a required nutrient on the bacterial growth rate why are they okay why are we asking this question again it will help us in designing large scale production the answer is um, i request all of you to open figure number 6.7 you can see from this graph that as the as the required nutrient concentration increases the final net growth or the yield of cells also increases this is also the basis of uh, microbiological assays for vitamins and growth factors okay similarly the growth the similarly the rate of growth also increases with nutrient concentration but in a hyperbolic manner much like the effect of substrate concentration on enzyme activity right the shape of the curve tells us about the rate of nutrient uptake by transport proteins at sufficiently high nutrient level the transport systems are saturated and the growth rate does not rise with increasing nutrient concentration so like these are the takeaways from the exponential phase we will look at stationary phase uh, stationary phase in the next video thank you Good morning, everybody. Today we'll understand the stationary phase. If you look at the figure, you will observe that the graphed line becomes horizontal. This is telling us that bacteria have stopped multiplying, and the population growth has ceased. Okay. In part, the reason for this is that uh, it's a closed system. Okay. Now it has been observed in this stationary phase. Uh, is usually attained by bacteria when they reach a certain population level around 10 to the power 9 cells per ml okay other microorganisms do not reach such high population densities for example uh, protist cultures uh, reach a maximum of 10 to the power of 6 per ml okay of course factors like nutrient availability uh, type of organism uh, also plays okay now this stationary phase in this stationary phase it has been observed that the total number of cells remain constant okay um, that you can easily tell by the graph uh, the y axis uh, which tells us the number of cells right now you can guess here that the number of cells the numbers are constant because of two reasons one either the number of cells dying and the number of cells dividing are equal okay or 
the population has stopped dividing but is metabolically active and they're not dying either okay these are the only two reasons uh, because of which the cell number might be uh, constant okay now uh, these bacteria enter this phase for several reasons number one uh, nutrient limitation that's the obvious reason if an essential nutrient is severely depleted uh, population growth will slow down okay number two oxygen availability in case of aerobic bacteria of course uh, now oxygen is uh, not very soluble and depletes very quickly so that only the surface will have adequate concentrations and uh, since this is a closed system you're not going to shake the culture or aerate the culture and cells below the surface will not grow okay third point accumulation of toxic waste products okay this this is observed uh, this seems to be the limiting factor in many aerobic cultures uh, sorry anaerobic cultures for example streptococci can produce so much lactic acid and other organic acids from sugar fermentation that the media becomes acidic and growth is inhibited okay and these streptococci can enter stationary phase due to depletion of sugar as well okay now finally there is some evidence that growth may cease when a critical population level is reached okay so entry of stationary phase may be due to all of these or several factors playing together right to what extent each factor contributes we don't know right now besides all these points there is one point which is of great practical importance in medical and industrial microbiology please pay close attention we have seen that these bacteria in batch culture may enter into stationary phase in response to starvation right now this probably occurs in nature as well uh, because many environments have a low nutrient level now these prokaryotes have evolved a number of strategies to survive this starvation many respond by uh, doing morphological changes such as uh, endospore formation some decrease in overall size uh, that is by shrinking protoplast and condensing nucleoid uh, there will be changes in uh, gene expression and physiology as well okay now these starving bacteria produce a variety of special proteins called starvation proteins these proteins make the cells much more resistant to damage they increase peptide double helix cross linking and thereby increase the cell wall strength and then there is this dps proteins short for, short for dna binding protein from starved cells okay these proteins protect dna and there are chaperone proteins which prevent protein denaturation and they also renature damaged proteins now as a result of these and other mechanisms the starved cells become harder to kill right and they are resistant to starvation resistant to temperature resistant to oxidative damage resistant to osmotic damage toxic chemicals they are resistant to toxic chemicals such as chlorine so you can understand that these changes are so effective that some bacteria can survive uh, starvation for years okay and there is also evidence that salmonella enterica serova typhimurium that is your salmonella typhimurium becomes more virulent when it is starved so now you can understand why this point is more important practical import practically important point in terms of medical and industrial microbiology see it's hard to kill these cells right so that is why this point is important in terms of medical and industrial microbiology so this is about your uh, starvation um, stationary phase of the graph uh, next uh, in the next video we will look into the decline phase okay thank you good morning today we'll understand the decline phase so in the figure you're observing it as a death phase so the first phase is lag phase then comes your exponential phase then the stationary phase then the decline phase now here um, the graph comes starts coming down because 
the number of cells um, becomes less and less and less now if you take uh, cells from this stage and put it in a fresh medium you see that they do not multiply now for many years it was assumed that uh, nutrient deprivation and uh, toxic waste build up caused the cells to lose ability to multiply okay but it was also observed that uh, cells uh, had not lysed so we assume that cells are dead without lysing right because they are not multiplying now this assumption is now challenged okay there are debates going around some believe start uh, starving cells that show exponential decline in density have not lost their ability to multiply rather they believe cells are temporarily unable to grow under laboratory conditions and this phenomena is called as uh, vbnc that is viable but non culturable uh, means the cells are alive but they are not able to multiply uh, just like as in uh, your uh, some cells turn into spores when the conditions are not favorable right uh, these cells these cells turn into non multiplying cells and it is considered one of the survival mechanism they say cells are not dead uh, and once the appropriate conditions are available they like either change in temperature or you passage it through some animal these vbncs will resume growth that is the argument now these vbnc microorganisms are a kind of threat to society because uh, the public health uh, because most of our food testing and water testing uh, depends on viable plate count method whether the cells are able to multiply or not now if the cells are vbnc type cells uh, they won't multiply but they are alive they become uh, more virulent or they become they start multiplying again once it is passed through animals once it goes into human body so that is the um, underlying threat uh, if vbnc hypothesis is really true now there is another group which believes that some cells are committing suicide by apoptosis or programmed cell death that. uh, that's why the cell numbers are going down they argue that the so called non culturable are actually dead and instead of lysing they're slowly leaking out the nutrients into the surrounding so that the ones which are alive can survive uh, so scientists have continued this experiment long term and uh, observed that um, instead of uh, exponential decline the gradual decline is observed um, which can last from months to years uh, here we'll observe that evolution kind of evolution is happening bacterial cells which are able to multiply are those that are able to utilize the nutrients released by their dying relatives they can best tolerate the accumulating toxins the, the, we can see waves and waves of genetically distinct population in the uh, shake culture flask so you, you can see the dark lines that's one strain now it can uh, it starts coming down its population starts coming down at the same time there is another strain which is developing which can tolerate this condition so the the numbers goes up but again um, they lose their tolerance and their number starts coming down there's another uh, population which is growing which can tolerate the newly altered condition so like this there is waves and waves of uh, new populations uh, new genetically distinct populations uh, arising right this can go for months and years um so this is what we observe uh, these are the takeaways from the decline phase okay next we'll look into mathematics of uh, growth thank you